Welcome back to day three at ACT Expo. This is fleet equipment from the show floor, powered by Cummins. I'm Kevin Linger, thanks for sticking with us today. You're gonna to find out what Bluebird, Mac, Harbinger, and Plus have on offer at their booths. And after all that, we're going to talk after treatment as we approach a steep change in emissions regulations. But first, let's check in with David King, Cummins North America on highway product manager for natural and renewable gas engines to see how the maintenance and life cycle of the Cummins X15N natural gas engine stack up to diesel. Dave, thanks for joining me here today. Hey, thank uh, you. We really want to get talking about the X15N. There's a lot of buzz around this engine, but how has it been performing when rolling into these applications for customers? Is it meeting their diesel-like expectations? It really is. I mean, customers are really excited about it. You know, they've had uh, limitations with previous versions of natural gas engines, only going up to 400 horsepower, 1450 foot-pounds. Now we can deliver the power, the torque that the heavy-duty customers need up to 500 horsepower, up to 1850 foot-pounds, really delivering uh, the performance they need for grades, for uh, length of haul with uh, fuel capacity you can get on vehicles these days. You can do line haul trucking with the X-15 in it. So performance is one side of it, uh, but we also need to talk about the life cycle and the maintenance profile. So how does running this compare to something that a technician might be used to for a 500,000 mile life cycle on an engine? So maintenance intervals we've extended with the X-15N. So now we're up to 60,000 mile uh, oil drain intervals and spark plug changes. It's very close to what diesel is today. And so you know, the downtime for just uh, periodic maintenance is very low and very similar to diesel. So given that a lower cost per mile on maintenance and couple that with the lower cost per mile on the fuel, that over 500,000 miles, you have a very positive rate of return on your investment with natural gas. Right. Now, are you seeing any regulatory or customer-driven trends that might make natural gas a more attractive solution as we're kind of bridging the way towards zero emissions? Well, there's a lot going on in the landscape of emissions and regulations, but we think, you know, continued focus on uh, environmental, uh, greenhouse gas reduction, and then the economic benefit that natural gas brings, you get a double win. And you know, that's great. And so anytime you can do something great for the environment and you know, be cost effective, it's, it's positive for the whole uh, TCO for natural gas. So you know, there's, there could be change in regulations, we don't know. We are playing for the regulations that are on the books and we are committed to be able to deliver to that and to deliver a good economic model for our customers. Right, and if you can deliver on emissions regulations and performance, it's a pretty good place to be. Exactly, no Speaking compromises. Speaking of a good place to be, we're at ACT Expo. What are you most excited to check out this year? Well, I'm excited about our booth. Because we have our home platform of natural gas, diesel, and hydrogen, uh, plus our Accelera uh, battery and fuel cell technologies. But it's just a, it's like a wonderland of all the different technologies. So it's just excitement. There's excitement in the air. Yeah. So it's a great show. Yeah, great. Thanks for taking the time, Dave. Really hey, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Coming up in the next few minutes, our Jason Morgan sat in on a NACFI seminar to see how the fleets in the next Run On Less event are working to decarbonize. But first, our Alex Chrissy has been running around the show floor. Let's see what he found at Mack Trucks and Bluebird. Bluebird recently announced two new commercial vehicle platforms showcased at ACT Expo, a propane-powered strip chassis and an all-electric step van. Both are class 5 to 6 with a GVWR up to 23,000 pounds. The propane chassis uses Ford's 7.3-liter V8, integrated by Roush Cleantech into a low-emission powertrain. The electric step van features a 140-kilowatt-hour battery for up to 130 miles of range, plus driver-assist systems like hill hold and electric creep. Both platforms offer a 55-degree wheel cut for light turns. Production will begin in 2026. Mac made two announcements at the show. First, the OEM announced two new variants of its MP13 engine and said it is seeking certification from the California Air Resources Board that the engines meet their 2024 omnibus requirements for low NOx and particulate matter emission standards. The two variants of the Mac MP13 TARB24 compliant engine will be available to order on Mac Pioneer models as soon as they've been certified. Mac said it expects certification to be completed by the end of 2025. 
Beyond that, Mac announced that it will soon offer an electric version of its newly launched Mac Pioneer Class 8 truck. Jonathan Randall, president of Mac Trucks North America, said in a press conference at Act Expo that the truck will have a 300 plus mile range and that it will go to market in 2026. Mike, good to see you. We're here at the Mac Free Breakfast ahead of Act Expo. You are about to kick off the run on less messy middle. Tell me about the run. What's going to happen? Yeah, so here in 2025, we're looking at um, heavy-duty long haul. We mean uh, long-distance return to base or over-the-road irregular rounds. So um, really tough to decarbonize. Uh, matter of fact, some people say trucking is hard to abate. Right. I disagree. For shorter vans and step vans and medium-duty and short-heavy, it's not that hard. But right. when you get into heavy-duty long haul with long distances, right. fast charge times or fueling times, really tough so that's what we're doing here in 25 we got boot camp sessions going on right now we were announced the fleets the fleets are all talking this morning about what trucks they're participating why are they investing in hydrogen or battery or biodiesel renewable diesel natural gas so uh, when the run occurs in august and september it'll all be about learning the whole industry can see these early adopters what are they doing? What's uh, easy to do and real beneficial to them and what's harder and what they're doing about that? Right. Well, I, I get messy middle. Congrats on that and that, that, that moniker because that's that's been fun. I know we've stolen it from you a couple of times. Oh, man, please do. <laughs> I feel like this is the first time Ryan Les has looked at multiple different powertrains, though. How are you going to manage that and check that? And what so, is that that's a challenge. So um, sometimes I call this run four runs in one. Yeah. Because uh, we have so many things to, to do. So it. The, the team, this is our fifth run on last, Jason. So we've been able to put together a process and a calendar, and here's what you do in each of the months leading up to the run. Right. So, um, you know, with more time and more efforts, it becomes, um, you know, easier. Uh, so at the same time, we make it com more complex with all these powertrains, but yet we're still very happy and excited about uh, making it happen. Right. Uh, one of the things we're talking about at the show, and I'm trying to get a handle on too, I think this is a great example of our fleets valuing the decarbonization emission side of it. You know, we value fuel efficiency, we value MPG. Does, if you say I saved, you know, 16,000 pounds of CO2 emissions, is there value there? So I would say there is, it it, de it definitely depends on uh, basically what your customers are asking you to do. So if your shippers um, have sustainability plans, you know, you get the, the scope three emissions um, and so forth. Uh, they may be uh, uh, valuing that less mm -hmm. as we move through how hard this might be in some in some areas, but um, it's still a, it's still there. Right. Um, but we're trucking. You know, we're gonna we're gonna uh, analyze all of this in total cost of ownership, tenths of a cent per mile. Right. And if these technologies don't work just because they're uh, cleaner and greener, they're not gonna make it, right. or they're gonna need to be um, to, to improve things to get closer to parity and total cost of ownership. All right, perfect. Mike, thanks for taking the time. Looking forward to hearing from the fleets. Yeah, uh, thank you. Our fleet consists of human-owned powered bikes, as well as um, class A super teams. Um, we are most proud of our rolling laboratory, which consists of about 2,000 units that we actually utilize to test capabilities, which includes a 15 liter. One of our most proud things that we're proud of is actually is partnering with other partners to actually and stand CG to class A. Um, we can try to hunt the center on RNG for use in our engine Unix, the carbon chains um, that we have for it. But also, we didn't go easy for the run less. We picked one of our most rigorous child route. We have, this will test the CS unit to go over 700 miles. Um, this will be a power test to see if it can pull. Also, it will also have a five chain feet elevation chain while towing a 53 foot trailer. Salt Lake City, Utah, provide the opportunity for us to test there. It gave us all the all the variables to pull triples, Rocky Mountain double, and long haul distance, whatever. You know, and as we go through this testing world, it has definitely proven to put a challenge on everything we do. Um, we do not out to discriminate on what type of fuel we use. However, you know, we require our units to actually operate in the same manner, which to pick and access. And here are more headlines from Act Expo 2025. Autonomous trucking software company Plus announced that it has completed validation tests of its virtual driver, SuperDrive. In recent tests at TRC Ohio, SuperDrive operated an international LT without anyone in the cab or even remotely controlling it. 
The system relied entirely on PLOS's self-driving technology to make real-time decisions. SuperDrive is trained using end-to-end -end AI and includes an autonomous fallback system, or AFS. According to the company, AFS safely handles issues like sensor failures or road closures by either stopping in lane or pulling over. To date, the company says it has logged more than 5 million miles of autonomous testing. Public road trials are underway in Texas and Sweden, with commercial launch preparation in progress. CEO David Liu adds that OEM integration is key, highlighting their partnerships with OEMs around the globe, including a recently announced one with Hyundai to power its hydrogen truck. Harbinger is introducing its new medium-duty plug-in hybrid, which it says is designed specifically for fleets who need extended range. Featuring an electric drivetrain and a gas-powered range extender, this hybrid delivers a 500-mile range on a single charge. The hybrid features a low-emission 1.4-liter inline four-cylinder gas engine with a 50-gallon fuel tank. That's paired with an 800-volt generator, which according to the company, allows for rapid DC fast charging up to 80% in an hour. Harbinger recently partnered with Panasonic Energy as its battery cell supplier. The company is integrating Panasonic's lithium-ion battery cells into its EV chassis. Fleets can choose either 140 or 175 kilowatt hours battery capacity. The platform produces up to 1140 foot-pounds of torque and 440 horsepower. The company is taking pre-orders now and deliveries are going to start in 2026. DOC, DPF, SCR, all working together to reduce NOx. After treatment systems have an important job and with an upcoming regulation set to slash NOx emissions by 80%, that job and the technologies helping to make it happen getting a little more complex. To understand modern after treatment systems a little better, let's throw it over to Jason Morgan for this technology deep dive. There's no question that emission standards are getting tighter. Fleet managers have felt that firsthand. But what's happening behind the scenes with after treatment system development and engineering tells a bigger story. One of smarter engineering and better tools to help fleets stay compliant without sacrificing uptime. Let's start with the basics. The after treatment system cleans up the exhaust coming out of the engine. Traditionally, that's done with a diesel oxidation catalyst or DOC, a diesel particulate filter, the DPF, and Selectic Catalytic Reduction, or SCR. Together, they target harmful stuff like carbon monoxide, soot, and nitrogen oxides, better known as NOx. Now here's the kicker. The next wave of emissions regulations is slashing NOx levels by nearly 80%. Yep, you heard that right, 8-0. It's a massive cut. And meeting those limits without adding size, weight, or complexity to the truck? That's the engineering challenge manufacturers are facing right now. Some manufacturers are responding by refining what's worked, tried and true components like the DOC, DPF, and SCR, but integrating new technologies like electric heaters, such as Cummins is doing with the X15G HG27 engine platform. These heaters warm the system faster in colder starts and low load conditions, which is when NOx is at its worst. That means better NOx control right from the start without having to bulk up the catalyst or burn extra fuel. It's all powered directly from the engine's electrical system, no additional batteries to manage. And because the heaters were designed in-house, they're built to meet strict durability standards. The idea is to heat what you need, when you need it, and keep the system reliable long-term. Other manufacturers are taking a different route. This approach starts inside the cylinder with higher compression and more complete combustion. The goal, burn more of the fuel in the engine, which aims to cut soot at the source. With less soot, there's less need for components like the DOC or even the EGR cooler. That's a big shift. Less gunk getting recirculated means fewer failure points and better performance over time. Instead, the after treatment system downstream is designed to handle higher NOx load. You'll see things like dual def injection and dual stage SCR catalysts. It's all designed for serviceability. Whether it's through precision heating or simplified combustion, the goal is the same, cut emissions and keep trucks on the road. Of course, fault codes are still a part of the game. After treatment systems remain one of the most common sources of diagnostic trouble codes, but the tools for dealing with them are getting better. Enhanced software doesn't just spit out the code, it helps pinpoint the issue, guide repairs, and prevent unnecessary regens. That saves time, money, and a lot of headaches. The bottom line, after treatment isn't just a compliance box to check. It's a critical piece of how modern trucks perform, operate, and stay on the road. 
As the regulations get tougher, the engineering behind these systems gets smarter and more focused on what matters to you, reliability, serviceability, and keeping your fleets moving on the road. Many paths forward is the message here at the Cummins booth at ACT Expo 2025, and it's a good message for the state of alternative fuels and the heavy duty industry. I want to thank you for watching fleet equipment from the show floor powered by Cummins. We've talked about after treatment, propane, EV, natural gas, cleaner diesel, and much more. And if you'd like to get even more of that, subscribe to Fleet Equipment. I'm Kevin Linger. Thanks for watching.